Okay guys, so in this video we are going to talk about monoliths. So let's get into it. <clears throat> so something I want to touch on in this video is basically that one of the biggest problems that you will face when you work on a large-scale project of any sort basically is that at some point you're very likely going to hit the enterprise problem and the enterprise problem is usually that you have so much code that it starts actually affecting your productivity now there's many manifestations you have legacy and you have other issues that can arrive and that's going to slow down your process but one thing that is for sure certain is that the more code you have the longer it's going to take you to actually build all of those all of that code into like the finished product, right? So basically what we're gonna sh look at is one of the biggest problems with enterprise monoliths and how to mitigate that problem a little bit. I'm not, you know, I haven't built an entire enterprise application here, of course, but I'm gonna try to simulate the problem that you will face. So something that I think is worth mentioning is that on the back end today, it's very popular to have this, you've probably heard it in some way, this term called microservices, where the basic idea is that you take a really large code base, a big application of some sort, and you split it out into multiple smaller services. Now, one of the benefits to this is that, of course, you have less code. So if you have a compiled language, it actually goes much smoother to build that smaller project and then you combine everything together in order to create a bigger system. Now in front end it used to be the case that we didn't actually have any type of compilation, like we didn't have a delay because it's a script, I mean JavaScript is a scripting language where you can just refresh the page and hey everything kind of just magically works, you're not actually compiling anything. But that has changed when you're using something like React or Webpack or similar types of tools in order to actually bundle everything together to one big file. And I can tell you from personal experience that it's not fun to work on a really big front-end project when you have a really large code base. Because the time it takes to build all your assets and like all of this stuff, it's actually going to start it's going to start to add up and when Webpack is being unperformant it actually slows down everybody who's working on that project. And there has been now a few hints to people talking about microservices in front end and stuff like that and I'm just here to t today to show you how you can basically achieve the value that such an approach would, like most of the value that that would, such a such an approach to this problem would give you without having to make some, like adopt a new tool or something extremely complicated. So let's just have a very brief look at my server here. And here is my application. It's very, very simple. All it's going to do is it's going to serve up a very simple app like this. And my application is basically this. It is a static file thing server you have three links you can go back and forth between these three links that's it and if we have a look at my main file here we can see that i am using react and i am rendering in my app into the root of the document which is this little document here and then if i look at my app here we can see that i have three routes and I have three links, and here are the actual routes using React Router. Now this is a like this is a very it's a toy example, but this is I mean for anybody who's worked on a React application using a full SBA type of solution, this should feel fairly familiar. It's very it's a very common pattern, right? So the problem that we have now, or rather the the thing that I would like to pose as a suggestion here is that if we just use our imagination and let's imagine that this is a really 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 big application that takes tons and tons of time to compile. The problem that we face now is that we're actually forced to bundle and compile this entire project every single time we want to make a change but the question is do you actually need to do that because most of the time you may be working on a flow that is in one of these routes but you're not really so interested in the rest of these routes so if you could somehow express a way to just load the route that you are actually working on if you're working on a big project then that would be the ideal case because maybe you're working on features that is under under foo when or like some the routes that are here but maybe you don't really care about these routes and these routes are of course very heavy they have tons of code as, as well so i mean the smaller the bundle size that you can work with the faster your compilation time is going to be so 
what my suggestion is is that rather than have this idea that all right let's split out everything into multiple repositories that's the, I will we will touch on that as well because there is a case for when that is really useful but before you go that far start by thinking about okay how can I just focus on building the thing that I'm actually working with and my suggestion is very like the the thing I'm going to show you hopefully feels very simple so I have a webpack configuration here that holds, uh, this is purely a standard boilerplate things, it's uh, the only thing that should draw your attention is this clause here. So I have a rule that is going to, it's basically a loader for the TS loader because I'm using TypeScript and the only thing I'm doing here as you can see is that okay I'm, I have a test and then I have an include because uh, like we want to narrow our scope as much as possible to gain that extra performance. We want to make sure that we're only compiling things that are supposed to be outputted into the client, the distribution folder that we have up here. But this is different. Most of you have probably seen people put the node modules, modules here as just the regex and that's the whole story, right? And that is absolutely true. Most people do this and that's just so that you don't pull in files from node modules by mistake. But I've gone one further here and I've created a, f a function because this is actually, it's also viable to create a function here. And what's going to be inputted here is basically every file that is being like there where we're trying to run that file through the TS loader or every resource if you will that we want to try to pipe through the TS loader. And the exclude is just going to say all right we're going to compile this or rather we're going to run, run through the loader or we're not going to run it through the loader depending on what happens. And then I have this. I have something called, we're importing this thing called excludes and the excludes has a optional property called regex and then we can run a test against that red, regex against the file path basically. So if uh, the path, the file path is either going to, if it contains node modules or it matches this regex we're going to exclude it. That's pretty much it. And then I have this little thing here where I do a spread on something called excludes.rules. So what's that about? So let's have a look at that. So this is my little excludes function, well, my little excludes script here. So I have a null loader that takes in a regex, where basically what I'm going to do is that I'm going to create a test that matches against that regex on every file that it goes through. It's going to do the same exclude and the same include, and then it's going to use the null loader, which is just a very small package that basically what it does, you could, you could write this yourself if you wanted, but null loader, this loader, all it does is that it says, all right, I'm just going to return an empty module here. I'm not going to actually go and f go through and include the thing that I'm including through CommonJS that, that that you're accustomed to. We're just going to return an empty module. So if this matches anything, let as an example, if this were to match this file, what's actually going to be returned is just an empty module. It's that there's not going to be anything here, which means that this property is going to be undefined, which means that this component is going to be undefined. It's not going to exist. So what does that mean? Well, it basically means that what I've done here in effect is that I've said that, all right, I'm going to exclude any file that I provide through, let's see here, here. So if I set the excludes property in my environment before I actually run the script, what I'm going to do is basically I'm going to do two things. The first thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to basically exclude the TS loader to do any work on anything. I mean this would work for Babel as well. I'm basically saying exclude any file that matches this regex. So I don't do any work with these files that matches this, right? And the second thing that I'm going to do is that I'm going to exclude the import. So the import itself, because the thing is, I can't do one without the other. Because if I'm not, if I'm using TypeScript or I'm using JSX or something like that, I need to convert it to JavaScript. Otherwise, it won't run in the browser. So I need a loader to do that conversion. But if I don't want to do that work, which is the thing that is actually taking time here, then I can simply say, all right, don't compile this and don't include it. Just return an empty module. So I'm short, so I'm basically completely cutting off that module. So when I'm running this today, right now, we'll see here that my the total fresh start time is 15 milliseconds, which is pretty heavy. So if I say that I save here and then my watcher is going to rerun and it's going to say, because the first one is always slower, but when you actually do it without without the call start, it should go a little bit faster. So seven seconds 
and it's going to take a little bit longer. Well, it should be rough that, yeah, exactly four seconds, something like that. So this is a fairly heavy operation, as you can see. Now, the reason why it's heavy is because I'm simulating an unperforming component by doing this. So I have these three components, very simple, small components, but this one, as you saw earlier, has this little search icon. This thing here, like, is the one of the most common in easy mistakes to make when you're working in front end. Somebody has a package and this my personal pain related to this is immense because I've fixed this problem so many many times but it's a different video how to solve that in a permanent fashion. Basically what's happening here is that somebody has by mistake included the search, they, they basically include all of the icons from a tiered UI icons and then they destructure out the search which means that we're literally pulling in the entire library to just get that one thing. Now we could of course fix this just temporarily but remember we're in fantasy land we're talking about we're trying to think about this as this super big massive project that has all of these dependencies and all this code right i'm just trying to show you how how much of a difference this actually makes when you get how to do this so what i'm going to do now is that i'm going to go here and i'm going to say foo.tsx actually i'm going to do bar.tsx as well because i realized that i only want to work on one thing so i'm giving the regex a regex string to this and now the total compilation time is going to go down quite a lot. So we just have to wait for the initial compilation. And there it is. So nine seconds on the first go. And that's just because it actually has a little bit of a caching thing here. So I should do it again. And it's now down to 102 milliseconds, 144. As you can see, it's like a world of difference. And if I go here now, going to foo, does nothing because there's no component to mount. Bar does nothing because there's no component. But here I actually have my route. And basically this is the benefit of, like th this is the thing I wanted to achieve. What I wanted was to save myself the hassle and like just exclude all the stuff that I'm not working on and just focus on the thing that I'm working on. Ideally I would just have like a component in my own little server somewhere and just working on that thing. But sometimes I actually do need to work with an entire flow of uh, of already existing components in some type of route. So this is a very easy way for me to just save myself the time or save Webpack the time it would take to just compile all of this unnecessary stuff that I'm not really working on. I'm only care, I only care about that. And by doing this, I can just exclude this. And that's the basic idea of how to solve this sort of problem when you have a really big project. So basically, Apart from this, I would suggest one more thing that you can do, and that is to have a think about your standard components, things that are joined between absolutely everything. I mean, the reason why this is working is because the only place we're including material UI icons is in Foo, but it could have been easily the case where we did the same thing in some of the other components that are the flow that I'm actually working on. So, I mean, apart, of course, from really making sure that you're importing things in the correct way and making sure that you're not adding extra bloat or something like that. Something that I highly recommend that you do is that you take your shared components and you publish that as a specific, like a, you basically create a distribution. You create generic components, one well, doesn't have to be generic ones, but standard components that fit all of your use cases. You pull that out into a separate project pre-build that and put that as an npm package or something like that and just include it as any other package and if it's pre-built it's not actually necessary like if it's already compiled you don't actually have to run it through the compiler which is great then basically you can save yourself that extra time you can just directly let the webpack include it without actually compiling it further reducing the time it takes you to build all your assets so what i want you to take away from this is basically that before you go into like thinking that oh we're going to do microservices on front end or stuff like that try give this a try I've had immense success working on larger projects with um, projects with this and if you adopt this together with the idea of pre-building your components into a separate package or a shared um, npm package of some sort those components that almost never change then you should be able to scale your system to quite like a do quite large sizes because the thing that is beautiful about having a monolith when it comes to frontend is that at the end of the day what you really want is to have a single bundle file that's the most efficient way for you to ship your assets so if you can avoid multiple network requests because that's the thing you want in production like in, in when you're running production and at the same time you want to be able to run, work 
work very efficiently and quickly when you're doing local development, this is kind of like having your cake and eating it at the same, at the same time. Have a great day.